I'm going to look at the rates question now. So I'll just scroll through it, point out a few things, and then let you get on and do the answers, and then I'll go through it. So hydrogen reacts with nitrogen monoxide as shown in the equation. We're given the rate equation. And we're also given a rate concentration graph for the NO. Told that the chemist uses hydrogen of concentration 2 times cent to the negative 2 moles per decimeter cubed. Using values from the graph, calculate the rate constant K. We must give it to two significant figures and in standard form. Part B, the chemist investigates the effect of change in the concentration on the initial reaction rate at two different temperatures and we're told that the reaction is first order with respect to hydrogen and we have to draw two graphs of the results. L is at the lower temperature, H is at the higher temperature. And then the final part of this part of the question, state the effect of the higher temperature on the rate constant. Part C, another sketch of a graph to do. Reaction can also be shown to be first order with respect to hydrogen by continuous monitoring of the hydrogen concentration during the course of the reaction. Using the axes below, sketch a graph to show the results. How would you use your graph to show that it's first order with respect to hydrogen? And then the final part of the question, we have to use the two steps that have already been proposed for the mechanism to come up with step three. So we've got the overall equation and we've got the first two steps. And then the final part, we have to explain why the mechanism is consistent with the rate equation shown here. So part A, calculate a value for K using the graph. So essentially we need to know the rate, we need to know the concentration of hydrogen, and we need to know the concentration of NO. So if we look at the question, we're given the concentration of hydrogen, so we've got that. The graph tells us all these different concentrations of NO, and it also tells us the rate of the reaction depend on the concentration of NO. So you can see I'll put a circle around here, concentration of 6 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed, and that's because that point on the graph is nice and easy because the rate is a nice exact number there. So I'm using the concentration of NO at 6 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed, the rate is also 6 times 10 to the minus 4. So there's my rate equation, there's my rearranged rate equation for k on its own. The numbers go in, don't forget to square the NO concentration, and you come out with this calculator value, which to two significant figures and in standard form is that. And hopefully you can make out my, my units cancelling there. So we've got moles per decimeter cube per second on the top from rate, and essentially we've got three lots of moles per decimeter cube on the bottom, and so one of these will cancel all of those. So we're left with seconds to minus one on the top, moles squared, dm minus six on the bottom. Take it up to the top, and you get those units. Part B. So it's first order with respect to hydrogen. So rate concentration graphs for first order are straight lines which must start at the origin. So L's at the lower temperature, so it has the lower gradient and H has a steeper gradient. 
rate constants increase with temperature, so the higher the temperature, the larger the value for K. So first order with respect to hydrogen, and so this time the concentration time graph needs to be a curve like this, and to show that it's first order, you would calculate several half-lives, and if it's first order, the half-life will be constant. And that would actually give you this profile of curve. And then the last part of the question, part D, about the mechanism. So on the dotted line, we had to come up with the equation for step three. So here's the logic. We need another hydrogen because we've only got one here. So that needs to go there. We need to get rid of the N2O. And so we need an N2O on this side of the step three equation to cancel with that one because we've got no N2O in this equation here. And we need another water molecule because we've only got one here. And hopefully you can see that those N2O2s will cancel when we combine steps one and two. And so the equation for step three looks like this. And then the last part of the question is not very straightforward. You can see I've written up here. And that's because ordinarily you just look at step two because that's the RDS, the rate determinant step. And you would go, it should have a hydrogen and an N2O2 in the rate equation. But it doesn't. It has hydrogen and NO squared. So we've got to be a bit, look at it a bit more detail now. So if you think about it, the first two steps are actually going to govern the rate of this reaction because it doesn't matter how fast this step is, this is the slow step at step two. So that's going to determine the overall rate of the reaction. So what we can do is combine steps one and two. And if you do that, essentially you lose the N2O2 and you're left with as reactants two NOs and an H2, which is consistent with the rate equation. So that is the way to explain that one. So you can see I've written up there, step two is the rate determinant step, however it contains a hydrogen and an N2O2. The rate of the reaction will be governed by combining steps one and two, which cancel down to hydrogen and two NO, i.e. that is consistent with the rate equation. So not very nice, but that's how you would get yourself out of that one.